Hi everyone, I'm so excited you're joining me today for this lesson on roast chicken. Roast chicken is one of those things that um, everyone I think should have in their repertoire of recipes. It's a back pocket dinner recipe that's so satisfying. The only issue is it can get sort of dry and overcooked easily and then sometimes you try to take it out early and you start to carve into your chicken and you realize it's not cooked and that's not fun. So there are some simple tips I'm gonna give you today to help make your roast chicken totally delicious. So we're gonna talk through some tips about just prepping the chicken and buying your chicken and then I'm gonna pull it all together and give you guys some alternatives for how you can change it up at home. So this is basically a blueprint for a really simple recipe and you can make it your own. Um, so the first thing I wanna tell you is when you bring your chicken home from the grocery store, open it up, put it on a tray. This is just a rack on a sheet pan and it allows the air to circulate around the chicken. This is an organic chicken. It's about three and a half pounds. Sometimes they come wrapped in plastic. I prefer finding the chickens from the butcher case that haven't been wrapped, shrink wrapped in plastic. I feel like that breaks down the proteins. The chicken to me doesn't taste as good when I have to buy the ones that are pre packaged in plastic. I don't know if it's psychological because I don't love the thought of chicken in plastic, um, but for whatever reason, I prefer them like this from the butcher. If you can find an organic pasture chicken, that's your best bet. Sometimes it's only labeled as organic and I go for that. Um, but find the best quality chicken you can. It's just gonna taste better. The first thing I'm gonna do is clean this up and prep it for whatever recipe that you're gonna cook. So take out, this has a little bit of like chicken skin over the leg to keep it in place. Just open that up, see if there's any gizzards or giblets inside the chicken, which there's not in this case. And then we're gonna dry it up. And um, you can cut off these wing tips if you want. I like to leave them attached because it's a nice hook to put behind the chicken. So I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna trim any thick pieces of extra skin around the cavity. And this has great flavor. So if you wanna leave it attached, you can. It's not like imperative that you cut it. Let's see how this looks. If there's any little residual feathers that are still attached, take those off. And you can use kitchen pliers for that, or honestly, I just like take them off myself. Okay, now the trick is, this is probably the best tip for you guys at home. Dry the chicken really well. You do not need to wash the chicken. The chicken, um, is gonna get cooked, so any bacteria is gonna get cooked out of it when it's roasted at high heat. So do not wash it in your sink because all that does is disperse the bacteria all over your kitchen sink and your counter. So keep it in one place. When I unwrapped this from the butcher paper, I just did it right on top of this tray. So this is the only thing that the chicken has touched. So get it really dry. You wanna dry it on both sides. You wanna dry the inside. And you'll notice if you let this chicken sit that it'll start to like release some moisture. And that is great. You want it to release as much moisture as possible before it cooks because then that's when you get really crispy amazing, delicious skin. So dry your chicken really well. The next tip I wanna give you guys is the chicken needs to come out of the refrigerator and rest for about an hour before you cook it. 
meat can stay out longer than people realize. The food safety rule is four hours total, but that's like from the time the chicken left wherever it lived and went to the processing plant and went to the grocery store, went from the grocery store in your car home. So that's two hours that is like off limits already just to be safe. So really this could probably sit out for two hours and be 100% food safe before we cook it. It's still really cold to the touch and we want it to come to room temperature so that those proteins relax. And you can tell even just sitting here now, it's already sort of relaxed on the tray because the proteins are warming up a tiny bit. And you don't want them warm, you just want them to come to room temperature. Okay, the next tip I wanna give you guys is probably the most important tip. If you skip drying the chicken, if you skip buying like maybe a slightly more expensive chicken and you wanna just be really budget conscious, which is fine, and even Costco has some great um, whole chickens. If you do this one thing, it's gonna make a big difference. We're gonna salt the chicken all over with kosher salt. And what that does is it draws out the moisture from the skin and it's gonna make a really crispy, delicious, like stretched skin and it's magic. It just makes all the difference. If you can do this step like a day ahead of time, even better. Usually when I make a roasted chicken, I like to open it up the day before I plan to make it and I salt it ahead of time. And then I clear off one whole shelf in my refrigerator and put it in the refrigerator uncovered and just let the air kind of circulate around the chicken and help to dry it out. It's not going to release any bacteria into your refrigerator as long as nothing is touching this. So just make sure nothing is touching your chicken. Not the shelf, not any other condiments or food that's around it. But if you can do that, it's gonna give you like amazing flavor results. If you've just brought the chicken home and you don't have time to prep it the day before, you can prep it now and just let it sit out for at least 30 minutes, preferably up to an hour before you cook it. So a little bit about the salt we're using today. This is diamond crystal kosher salt, which is my favorite kosher salt to cook with. It's really flaky and um, it just has a really nice flavor. If you are using table salt, it's a little bit saltier and it can have a little bit of a metallic flavor. So do a little side-by-side -side tasting. And if you can move on from that table salt and graduate to kosher salt, it's gonna make a difference in your outcome. It's really flaky. It just has a really nice volume of salt and it creates a delicious flavor. So as I like to say when I'm doing this, make it rain salt. You want a nice coating of salt. And some of this you can brush off before you bake it if you'd like to, but you really, really want it to have a really good coating of salt. I'm gonna flip it over and now I'm only gonna use this hand to salt this side. And you want to salt the cavity too, guys. So for the last piece de resistance, we're gonna get some salt in the inside. So a lot of this is gonna get brushed off. I know that seems like a lot of salt, um, but this is gonna get brushed off before we finish it and bake it. So for right now, there's nothing else I need to do. I'm gonna put this aside for an hour and let the salt work its magic. While the chicken is resting, we can prep the rest of our ingredients that we're using in this recipe. And this is a very pared down, simple version of roast chicken. And sometimes simple is best. There's a Thomas Keller recipe for roasted chicken that literally just uses salt and it's dry cooked and the heat just renders the fat from the chicken skin 
and that's the only cooking fat that's used in the recipe. So it's okay, there are probably a million different versions of roast chicken, but this is the one that we're gonna start with that I think is great for everyone to know. So the first thing we're doing is cutting our lemon in half, which we'll use in our chicken, and I'm gonna cut this head of garlic in half around the middle. You can just hold on to the top. Oh, that looks so beautiful. And that is gonna add so much flavor to our pan sauce in the oven. And then we just have some thyme and some rosemary. You could use a variety of herbs in this. You could use sage, you could use lavender, you could use parsley or chives. There are so many different variations um, and delicious herbs that you could use. We are also using just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top of the chicken when we prep it. Let me give you guys a few ideas of what you could do to change this up. You could use sage in the fall with garlic and even add some butternut squash to the pan while the chicken's roasting. You could add apple, sage, and red grapes to the pan, and it would make a delicious pan sauce. You could just do a bed of carrots underneath the chicken that soften as the chicken cooks, or a bed of thinly sliced potatoes. Or you could do a bunch of leeks or fennel or onion, and I'll give you guys a whole list of flavors and vegetables in the printable recipe so you guys have some ideas you can play with. Just do me a favor and the first time you make this, make it the simple way, just to see how it works out, what the method is, and the techniques that you can get under your belt to master roast chicken. So let's bring, it's been about an hour that our chicken's been resting. I'm gonna bring it back brush off a little bit of the residual salt and prep it to put it in the oven. So as the chicken rests, there's a little bit of liquid that might drop off the chicken just as it's like coming to room temperature, which is great, you want that. You want it to release as much liquid from the skin as possible. So brush off just a tiny bit of the salt. You want some of that salt left, so don't brush all of it off and then and it's like you'll see liquid almost on top of the chicken that the salt has released you want to get all of that up okay the next thing we're going to do is tuck our wings under and we're going to add some herbs and garlic inside the cavity of the chicken. So we're gonna get a handful of thyme, a handful of rosemary, and you could tie these together, but there's no need to. Just put them, oh, it already smells so good. And you can rub them between your fingers if you want to release some of those natural oils from the herbs. And if they stick out a little bit, great. It looks pretty. Okay, we're gonna add our garlic. And then we'll add our lemon. And I don't squeeze this yet because as it goes in the heat of the oven, it gets super soft and we'll squeeze it later and use it in our pan sauce. Then we're just gonna tie the legs together. You don't have to totally truss the chicken. You can just simply wrap the twine around one leg wrap it around another leg, and then pull those two pieces together and tie a bow. It doesn't need to be complicated. The only thing this is doing is keeping the legs tightly together. And if you really trust it, it would just keep it a little bit tighter. But in my opinion, that is something that stresses people out. I feel like that can stress people out and it's not a totally necessary step, so why worry about it? Just tie the feet together. 
So now the last thing we're gonna do is just add a little bit of olive oil to our chicken. That was a tablespoon and we're gonna rub that in. And that just helps make a really brown skin. It's like suntan lotion. Okay, and that just looks beautiful. The herbs, it smells really good. If you want, you can just put it in the oven on this sheet pan, exactly like this on the rack. And I do that sometimes. I also love making roast chicken in a cast iron pan, or you can make it in a small metal roasting pan, or even a ceramic roasting pan. The ceramic pans are not going to create as brown of a crust underneath. It might steam the bottom of the chicken a little more. So if you use one of those, you can find a little rack that fits inside or something called a V rack. It's very inexpensive. It's available online and um, you can just set it right in a roasting pan to lift the chicken up and air will, will circulate better around the chicken. Today, we're gonna to put this right in a cast iron pan and put it in the oven. Before we do that, I wanna just talk to you guys about the heat of the oven. Our temperature is at 425 because we are roasting a chicken. If we were baking a chicken, the temperature would be 350, but we want high heat. We want that heat to hit the chicken and the chicken skin and really crisp everything up and create that reaction that makes a beautiful roast chicken. This was th roughly three and a half pounds. And you want to roast your chicken for roughly 15 to 18 minutes per pound. I gauge 15 minutes per pound and then I'll take the temperature a few minutes before that. So I'm gonna roast this today for 45 minutes and take the temperature. One of the things I wanna make sure that you have stocked in your kitchen is an instant read thermometer. When people ask me in cooking classes, how long do you cook that? Or how long should you cook your chicken breast? Or how long should you cook your chicken thighs? My sort of sarcastic answer is cook it until it's done. But that's the truth. You don't wanna cook it based on time because a recipe may tell you to cook something for a certain amount of time, but your oven may be slightly hotter or slightly off, and you may have it in a part of your oven that's not as hot, or your pan that you're using to roast it may not conduct heat as well. So taking the temperature is imperative, and what you want is a temperature between 155 and 160, I usually really try to pull it at 160. And then as it rests for 10 minutes before you carve it, it's gonna come up to 165 because the proteins keep cooking as it rests when it comes out of the oven. So instant read thermometer. Okay, I'm going to transfer this to my cast iron pan and if I was using any veggies, I would cut them up now and toss them in the pan and put the chicken right over it. But today we're just making this simple basic roast chicken that is delicious on its own. If you would like, I do see in some recipes that um, people will add a little bit of water or a little bit of white wine to their pan before they add the chicken. I prefer not to do that at this stage because I want to get the skin really crispy and I don't want anything that's going to poach or steam or add too much liquid. I want a dry heat. But you can use a little white wine to make a pan sauce later if you want, just with the drippings. Add in like a fourth of a cup to half a cup of dry white wine, like a Pinot Grigio or a Sauve Blanc, just not a oaky Chardonnay. And you can mix that together and heat it in your pan after the chicken comes out and is resting. Okay guys, this is the cast iron pan I'm gonna roast in today. It's a lodge cast iron pan. It's really simple. I use it for all kinds of things. We're gonna put the chicken directly in. 
I do want to make a note when I put it in, I want the legs to face away from the handle. So the reason I do that, and I'm going to tuck in these herbs so they don't get too burned as they go in this 425 degree oven. So the reason I put the legs away from the handle is sometimes the breasts will cook faster than the legs. The hottest part of the oven is the back corners. So if I'm putting my chicken in this way, the legs are gonna to be towards the back of the oven and these are gonna get more direct heat than the breasts. So everything will cook at the same time. If you want, you can start the chicken facing towards one corner of the oven and then switch it halfway to face the other corner of the oven. If you're afraid you're gonna to forget to move it, just put it in straight on which is what I usually do because sometimes you get distracted with cooking other things or helping kids with homework and then you've totally lost track and you've only charred or browned your chicken on one side. So just go ahead and put it in today straight in. So I'll set a timer for 40, 45 minutes to take the temperature and see where we're at. Okay guys, we're gonna check the temperature of the chicken and see where it's at. Usually I would do that right in the stove where it is, but I'm gonna bring out the chicken so I can show you how I check the temperature. It's so heavy. Okay. I'm gonna check the temperature right here. That's at 126. Let's see what this side is. 121. So this needs to go back in. But once it hits like 140, you guys, it goes really fast. So just know that it's gonna, as it starts to heat up, it starts to go faster. So we'll check that again in about 15 minutes. All right. Let's get our chicken. It looks amazing and it smells so good, like rosemary and garlic and roasted chicken and it has all this schmaltzy juices in the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna tent the chicken and let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. I don't usually cook directly on foil, but I use it to cover meat as it's resting a lot. I don't like to use it to line my sheet pans because of the aluminum that can leach into your food. And I'm trying to keep my aluminum intake as low as possible. So just kind of you can use your knife too. This pan is really hot. So be careful when you do this part. And it's just tented. It's not on there tight. Um, it's just to keep it as warm as possible. And this is gonna let the proteins in the meat relax a little bit. And it's gonna let the juices stay in the meat instead of running out when we cut into it. So when this is ready to cut, we're gonna take it out of our pan onto the cutting board save all your pan juices, and we're just gonna serve it up on a beautiful platter of more herbs and some of that juicy lemon, and it's gonna be the best dinner ever. Okay guys, it's time to plate our chicken. It smells so incredible. I wish you guys could smell what it smells like in this kitchen, but I hope you'll make this and your kitchen will smell the same way. So you can transfer it to the platter two ways. You can use tongs or a little carving fork. Just don't puncture the breast meat or else all of the juices are gonna run out. I like to sort of put the fork in the cavity and use that to just lift 
the chickenette. Let as many juices as possible drip back in the cast iron pan. And then we'll put this right on our platter. It smells amazing. I'm gonna add some fresh herbs. That's just a little bit of skin that didn't get too crispy that I'm getting rid of. Any skin in the pan that stays that's crispy, let it stay and it can be a part of your pan sauce. Save your pan sauces because you can put them in a little bowl with a spoon or just drizzle them over your chicken before you serve it and they have so much flavor. There's a little bit of lemon juice in here and I might add one of these warm lemons. Once this lemon gets all soft and charred in the oven, it just adds amazing pulp and flavor to your sauce. And then I just put these lemons back on the serving pan. So if you do want to make a pan sauce um, and not just use the juices, take out any of the lemon seeds, put this back on the stove and just add one fourth to one half cup of wine and whisk it all together. If you want to make like a thicker sauce, you could add a little bit of arrowroot powder to thicken it up, but I like it just really thin and fresh. Okay, I'm gonna bring over my platter. Oh, it smells so good. And I'm just gonna cut off this string You could really just untie it if you want. So get rid of the string. And then when I serve this, I just put some more fresh herbs on the platter. It just smells so good. And these greens make it look really beautiful. And you don't have to do this if you're making this for like a weeknight dinner for your family. But if you were gonna have this out to serve um, to friends and you wanted it to look beautiful before you carve it up, I would highly suggest this. And it's just, it's ready to go. It's such a great dinner. I hope you guys try this recipe. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Leave a note on our private Facebook group and post a picture when you guys make this. I wanna see how it turns out for you. Thanks so much. Bye.